Hello everyone, in today's video we will talk about the new input system and why you should use it. Well it's quite simple, do you want to use different kind of controllers with the same line of code? Even if you are a beginner I still think you should learn this new input system although it's a teeny tiny bit harder to get used to but once you do you don't want to go back to the old one I promise that. In this video I will show you how to set it up. What are these means and what you can use it for? We will create a basic simple controller with some C sharp code using the new input system. So without further ado, let's get started. I just started a new project using the latest version at the time of the recording, which is the 2023.1.14 version. I will use the universal render pipeline, but if you use any other, it won't matter in this case. I named this project as new input system tutorial and create it. Once it's loaded, just head to window. Package Manager, Unity Registry and Input System. Install the package and when it's done it will ask you to restore the editor. Let's load it back in the Assets folder, create a new folder and name it Input. Open it and then right click Create Input Actions and name it Input Controller and open it. So this is where we set most of the things for our input. On the left you can see an action map section. This is basically grouping of different actions. For example, we can have one for a player, a vehicle and a plane like in GTA. Or for VR you can group it for the headset inputs like position, rotation. Then one for each hand's position and rotation. Then for the hand's interactions, locomotions and one for the UI. Then in the middle is the actions. This is where we can specify what our player can do, like moving, interacting, attacking, etc. So first create an action and name it interact. Here we can add bindings to it. For example, we can add the E button to it. If you select it on the right, you can see the binding properties. At the path, we can specify the exact bind we want. But we don't need to find it in all of these controls. If you push the listen button and just press E and it will show up as E in Bracky's keyboard. Select it and now the E key will trigger the interact action. Let's create another action for movement. I will name it move and in the right section there is an action type field set to button. So let's see what options do we have. So there are three options button, value and pass through. Button is simple basically it used for actions that used once in a while. Value is used for well all kinds of input types. We have touch for mobile inputs, quaternion for rotation and loads more for different use cases. Value has a disambiguation process which is simply means if we have multiple input devices at the same time it will select the main one and use that. Pastry is similar. You have the same control types but it doesn't have started and cancelled events which we haven't got to it yet but it's more simplified. Also it just takes all input from the connected devices so it doesn't have any disambiguation process. This one can be used for local multiplayer for example. For this tutorial I will use the value type so with that in mind let's continue. So what we will need in this particular case is a vector 2. Once you selected it and at the move action click that plus sign and it looks a little different now. Right now we will need the up down left right composite. You can delete this one now. It will create a vector 2 with 4 binding options and this is where we need to specify it to the WASD keys. We can rename it as well to WASD and we need to add the bindings to it one by one just like before. This time the output will be a vector2 type and we will be able to directly use it in our code for moving the player along two axes. About these interactions and processors we will talk at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Oh and a very important step, we need to manually save the input asset with the save asset button. Also we need to generate a C-sharp script for this one. Just Take this option and hit apply. In the assets folder it will create a new c -sharp script. What we will do next is create a simple scene where we can move around with our character and a script that will control it. Once we're done with that we will add an Xbox controller to it as well and you will see how easy it is. So I just quickly created this simple scene, nothing fancy just a plane and a capsule. But don't worry the whole project can be downloaded from github, the link is in the description. Next, select the player and add the new C sharp script. Name it player controller and open it up. First we need to reference the input controller asset class. 
To do that, we need to initialize it in the awake function. I'm just going to create a private variable input controller, name it input controller. And then in the awake function, the input controller equals the new input controller. Then we need to enable and disable the input controller. We just simply do it in the on enable and on disable function. So just type input controller dot player dot enable and input controller dot player dot disable. From here, we have two ways to move forward. First is similar to the old input system. We can get the values in real time and do some calculations with it. In our case, when we want to move, we will push the WAS or the keys continuously. So this will be better solution for that. How can we do that? Well, just go to the update function because we will need to know if it changes at any moment of time. So create a vector two variable called input vector and I read out the value from the input. The vector two input vector equals input controller dot player dot move. And here we are going to read out the value. So read value and the type will be vector two. Then we set our direction. So check out the player game object. The Z axis will be the forward and backward axis and the X will be the left and right. So based on this, the code will be the following. We will create a vector free direction variable where the left and right will be the X axis. Then the Y axis will be zero because that is the up and down. And the Z axis will be the Y axis from the vector two component. Then we will simply modify the transform that position based on the direction vector. We will need a move speed variable to be able to modify the speed of the character. And of course the time to delta time. This will make our movement frame rate independent. Now if we start the game we can quickly realize the speed of our character will be different sideways than forward and backward or left and right. And this is because our vector to what we get from the input system is not normalized. But what does it mean and what can we do with it? Well, the solution is quite simple, but first we need to understand why does it happening. So normalizing means the magnitude of the vector or its length will be exactly one. But first, just to understand why we need to do that, print out the vector's length. Uh, we use the debug.log and just insert the input vector that magnitude. If you start the game and press the W and D key at the same time, you can see the value of 1.4. And if you press just one of them, the magnitude will be one. So why is that a problem? Well, the problem lies in the speed of movement. If you define the movement speed at one unit and you move left and right, up and down, your speed will be one. But if you move sideways, then your speed will be 1 times 1.4. So your character will move faster in that direction. But if you normalize it, the magnitudes will be always exactly 1 and the movement speed won't be affected by the direction of the movement. But if we have one unit long vectors, how can the magnitude be more than 1? Well, the answer lies in vector math, more precisely in Pythagorean theorem. When you have the two size length on the power of two and sum it up, then it will be equal to the third one's length on the power of two. So if we take the square root of it, we will have the square root of two, which is approximately equals 1.4 something. So that's why we have greater speed sideways. To fix it, we have a number of ways. We can do it in code with a simple normalize function, or we can do it in the input action asset. We can directly have digital normalized value, or we can add to the action a processor where it normalizes the output value. We can use either of those, it's up to you. We will have the same result. Now if we start the game and no matter what direction you try to move, the magnitude will be exactly one. Awesome! If you want to learn about it in more detail, you can find Freya's video in the corner and in the description. Check it out, it's a really good one. So that was the first way to use the new input system. The other one is when we can subscribe to the event when we trigger it. In our case, when we try to interact with something, pressing the E key. This will be perfect for it because we hit that button just once in a while and then the interaction happens. So we won't need to check it every frame in the update function. But if you want to, and that is one of the big advantages of the new input system, you can.
right now just stay at the subscribing so to do that we need the start function and similarly to the previous one start with the input controller the player that interact dot and here we have three options started performed and cancelled so what are these means well it has so many different use cases it would cover an entire video so right now i just covered the basics so the button when we press it at a certain threshold at 0.2 it caused the started event when it reaches another threshold at value of 0.6 it will call the performed event and then at release if it reaches 0.1 threshold it will call the cancelled event obviously it doesn't make any sense on the keyboard but if we set it to a trigger on an xbox controller it will for example on started event you can make a get ready animation and when you reach the performed event you just start any action you want so right now a simple performed event will do for us it sends out an event so we need to subscribe to it with a plus equals syntax by the way you should subscribe to the channel too and for that you don't need any syntax just a simple click on the red button sorry back to the code after it we will need a function to call i just create an interact function with a debug.log message in it and i just type interact so once we interacted with our button, it will give us a console message. But it still has a red underline and this is because it requires this callback context parameter in the interact function. With this context, we can do all kinds of things. For example, we can use it for context the read value like we used it before or context the read as button and it will give us a boolean if it's been pressed or not. It can be quite useful. And one last thing missing is the new input system namespace. Great. And it should work now. Press start and it does. Now let's see why is the new input system is so powerful. What if I want to use an Xbox controller? How can I do it? Well the only thing you need to do is add bindings to the existing actions and that's it. No new codes so let's do that. So at the move action we need to add the Xbox joystick with the vector to output again and at the interact we need to add the button. I'm gonna add the A button. Save the asset and that's it. Start the game and it works. Amazing, isn't it? What is left is the interactions and processors in the input asset. So what are they for? Start with the processors. It basically processes the values before we do anything with them in our code. Here is an example with the Xbox controller. The joystick on the controller is not perfect. At zero position, it not always gives zero value. Sometimes it gives 0 0.05 or something. And our character will move slowly. But in our processors, we can define a dead zone for the joystick, which easily solves this problem. On default, it suggests 0 0.125, so we won't have any input value until the joystick reaches its 12.5% uh, of its available root. And then it will give a value from 0 to 1 on the remaining route. Also, we can normalize the output here as well, just like we did before. At the interactions, well, it could have a whole another video about hold, press, slow, tap, tap. But for simplification, just look at the press and the hold ones. We can specify when we want our action to be performed. Press only, it will be performed when we press the button. Release only, it will be performed when we cancel the press. And the press and release, it will be performed on press and cancelled on release. The hold interaction is performed when you press the button for a given time. This could be useful, for example, if you have like a heavy attack where you have to hold the button for a while and you will have a different kind of attack with an increased damage. I know there is another way of using the new input system with the player input component, but personally I like to control it myself in code and I hate to expose functions that shouldn't be exposed. I mean, we have to set these functions to public to be able to use it in the player inputs component. So I rather use this kind of approach. Also, I will link Samyam's playlist about the new input system if you want to know more about it. She dives into it in much more details. Check it out. So this is the new input system in nutshell. Personally, I like this one much better, easier to use with multiple kind of inputs, especially if you use VR devices. Thanks for watching and I hope you like this video. Hit the like button and if you don't want to miss my future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video.